vertigo. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of vertigo? Yes. yes. I have too. Right. All right. <laughs> we'll put you over here and Mr. Bear. All right. Yep. Good to see you. God, what goes around comes away. <laughs> this is for you. Why don't you sit next to Phyllis? Yeah. Here they are, folks. They're going to be Phyllis is saying to him, those were cute. And they were, they were great. And I want to thank you. What no one knows here is those original release prints are the property of Mr. Bear. He loves one of his own prints. Please tell us what memories come back when, when you watch these. And don't forget to use the microphones. Fun. The uh, we made. 63 Johnny Coke shorts. The original was called So You Want to Give Up Smoking. I shot it at USC because I was a young teacher in those days. And they asked me would I write and direct a short film that could give the students uh, some actual experience. <clears throat> so I sat down and wrote so you want to give up smoking. We had, I got a hold of George O'Hanlon, who was not much more than an extra. He'd get a one-line bit here and there. And uh, we, uh, we made the film. When it was done, it was kind of good. It was like these two. It was very, very, very good, as a matter of fact. So, I took it out to Warner Brothers and uh, showed it to them. And uh, when the film was over, I was uh, sitting next to the gentleman who was from New York and was out buying shorts. And he says, well, kid, uh, what do you want for that? And I said, uh, 25? He says, 25,000? No, no, 2,500. Oh, well, that's different. I brought me down the hall here. They took me into the, the, um, the lawyer's office and said, uh, this young man, as soon as he brings out the negative, get him a check for $2,500. We're buying his short Sunday. So I was elated, of course, and uh, on the way back to the university, it occurred to me that I didn't own the dam. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I went in to see the head of the department and told him what I had done, that I had sold the short. He said, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> he says, what did you get for it? I said, 2,500. And he said, well, let's see now. Did the students get uh, some on the, uh, on the set? <laughs> And I said, yes, they did. She said, now, we don't have a, 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 a vault here, a fireproof vault. And I said, no, we certainly don't. Now, what did you get for it? I said, 2500 He says, well, supposing you endowed the university with $1,000, we could forget the whole matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that started the, the run on the, Thing. They went out and did very well in the theater, so they said, make another. So I got a hold of George again. In the meantime, I had put him under contract. He was to get $400 out of you know, whatever things happened. We had a suspicion that there might be more than this, the first short. And uh, so we made one called, uh, so you think you're allergic, and another one was, uh, so you one that you need glasses and went on down the line. Always the problems of the, of the uh, average man. Okay, that's the beginning. So how did you get to cast Phyllis Coates as Joe's wife? I think, Phyllis, I'd like you to tell me the first day you met me, if you can remember that. 
I was under contract to Warner's, a stock contract, kind of a non-meaning contract. And they said, we want you to meet Mr. Bear, who does a series. And at that point in my time, my career, I said, I would love to meet Mr. Bear. And they took me on the set, right? Well, um, yes. Yes, it's <laughs> fairly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> my, my version of meeting this charming young lady was in the cock and bull restaurant. <laughs> and uh, she was introduced by a lady friend of mine who happened to be the secretary for your agent. Do you recall the name of your agent? Because I don't. I don't either. <laughs> so anyway, we met that way, and uh, I was casting. We had had uh, several other girls playing. The, the part of Alice, and one by one, they dropped out. They either got married or they went on to bigger things. But uh, I had you come out to the studio and read, and I was enchanted uh, and hired, hired you. I had a, I had a different deal at Warner's. I, uh, we had Richard Bear Productions, which the profit that I made out of that film, I didn't get a salary. I, I got, if I could make them uh, as cheaply as possible, I would put more money in my pocket. But uh, you were uh, under contract to Richard Bear Productions. Do you, you remember that? <laughs> anyway, somewhere down the line, we fell in love. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we went off to Vegas. Do you remember going to Vegas? I remember going to Vegas. Now it all comes. It all comes back. <laughs> I have, the reason I'm carrying this, I thought there was going to be a table here. And that we could, uh, Do you want me to hold I it? I got pictures. Well, I, yeah, if you can open this. Oh, sure. I want to show Phyllis some pictures made on our honey. Turn off all the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> What happens in Vegas does stay in Vegas. <laughs> we can make a short of uh, <laughs> So you want to see your honeymoon photos? <laughs> Is this right here? Yeah. How's that? No. Okay. I will. He's still a director. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a keeper of evidence. <laughs> Okay. Uh-huh. I don't think you want that. Short movies promote Texas Beauty's career. Oh, we know that you're from there, so that has to be an article about you. Yes. Oh, here are the photos. There are the photos. I don't think you can see them too <laughs> well, there we are. Now, Maybe we'll photograph. I brought them to show you. I haven't got my glasses yet. <laughs> this is literally a reunion for them. They haven't seen each other in decades. And, and so this was a real reunion. So they're getting to know anyway, each other. Is, these pictures are you and I on our honeymoon in Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Yes, I was a big spender. <laughs> so Phyllis, tell us how you got started. Was it with Ken Murray's Blackouts? Yeah. Ken Murray's yes. Blackouts, the Florentine. Ken Murray's Blackouts in the Florentine Garden. But I really cut my teeth at comedy in Ken Murray's Blackouts. We played the King. El Capitan Theater. Uh, is it still here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The Hollywood Palace. Palace. Yeah, it's it, it's called the Hollywood Palace now, but it. it. Ken Murray, Marie Wilson, and uh, Ken taught me timing. He said, "You can time, and I'll put you in skits." And timing was the clue. And he said, "You're either born with it or you're not." And uh, I did a lot of skits with Ken, and uh, one thing led to another. And, now, 
you uh, also worked at Republic, didn't you? Republic Pictures? Why did I ever? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what it was like working at uh, Republic Pictures. Republic? It was tough, but it was a lot of fun. I worked with Western directors. You know, Western people are different entirely than the Hollywood crowd. They're very down to earth, and you get it, and you shoot it, and you hit your mark. And one time, I didn't, and got knocked out. But Lee Sholem was the director. He said, bring her to, bring her back, we'll finish up the shot, and she can go home. <laughs> Lee was great. Lee and Tommy Carr, and those Western guys, boy, they knew how to serve up and shoot fast. And they got a result. And it was a pleasure to work with. And you got to work with them again on television, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, I think they seem to be a television show some of us might remember you were on. Do you remember working on something, a little thing called Superman? Yes. The original Lois Lane on television. <laughs> six days a week, and George had open bar in his <laughs> dressing room. Was Barney Selecki really, really you know, had a fit. Mm. But I mean, we shot fast. And George was great to work with. Great man. It was lovely. <laughs> and his lady liked me, which made it easy. But uh, boy, we, we put a lot in the can in one day. You know, from 6.30 or 7 in the morning till 6.30 or 7 at night. And nobody batted an eye. And you could touch somebody's props or, or their stools or... Nobody cared in those days. You just I had a little daughter who had a congenital hip. And I had, was given a great apartment. Apartment, I think it belonged to somebody who had gone with the weddings. Bigger than most, bigger than a New York apartment. And the, the groups would come over and take my little daughter for a ride to go from one stage to another. Um, you know, just friendly. Now you did 26 episodes, which would be considered a season of Superman, and then you didn't do them anymore. I wanted to get out of Superman for personal reasons. And I did a pilot with Jack Harson and Alan Jenkins. Didn't sell, but at least I got loose from Superman. And I wanted to. It was. Okay. <laughs> That's perfectly, perfectly great. So now, over a period of, I believe, something like eight years, you were doing the Joe McDoat's films on and ten off. Years. Well, you did it for 10 years. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah she. Off and on 10 years. Yeah. Uh, so tell me. What was it like working on these films with the great George O'Hanlon, who, of course, most of us remember best as the voice of George Jackson, but these precious shorts, what was he like to work with? Delightful. He was Dick's alter ego. <laughs> oh, who was he really? Mr. Well, Perry, what was it like? George, George and I had a sympathetic that we discovered that we had the same sense of humor uh, very early. And thank God for that, because that's what made the show a success. Uh, we, uh, it's why, strangely enough, when I was down at the university looking for somebody to play Joe Dunks in that student film, uh, my wife at that time, that was before you, honey, <laughs> <laughs> said, I've got just the boy that could, that could play that type of comedy. And I said, I don't know. He's your old ex-boyfriend. And uh, I kept interviewing young men to, to do it, and then I couldn't find anybody that I thought was any good. So she said, the no, I couldn't find the part. So she, uh, she said, well, if you wouldn't be so stubborn, and uh, I'll have him come out to see you. So we came down to USC, and I told him what we were going to do about a man that had the cigarette habit, and that he had, was trying all these different methods of humor, but yet there was a, a lot of seriousness into it, of how you really could give up smoking. And he pulled the cigarette out of it, and he started walking up and down doing, I said, you're the guy. 
I didn't handle that. It was just fantastic. Because the first short was not a live dialogue. It was narrated. So he had to do a lot of that. So you continued doing a lot of directing, and, and then, of course, you made the uh, transition to television. Um, before we get to the one show that you're probably best remembered for, um, you worked with Rod Serling, and you directed several episodes of Twilight Zone. Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Including my all-time favorite episode, This is the Man Who Directed to Serve Man. Oh. <laughs> What was it like uh, directing, uh, well, first of all, Rod Serling, what was it like? Uh, well, he, uh, the day that I met uh, Rod, I had uh, been hired by uh, his production guy, and uh, Rod came in the room, and I expected to see a long, tall, skinny guy, uh, as the writer that he was. And he comes in, and uh, it looked like a quarterback from USC, the way he did, he took out his hand. Good to see you, Mr. Bear, and blah, 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 blah. He was absolutely the antithesis of, of what you would think that a writer of Twilight Zone mm -hmm. was like. The budget for a Twilight Zone episode, uh, certainly, and, and, and the filming schedule, what was that filming schedule like? How long did it take? The usual three days. We took three days to do it. I, I, it's amazing. Three days for to serve man. Yeah. Unbelievable. Three, three days. The, another episode was The Hunting that you directed. Wow. The Twelve Months. No, you didn't no, know that? No. What were the other ones? Do you remember any of the others? Because To Serve Man is uh, maybe yeah. just about the greatest episode in the whole series. Yeah. And, uh, it's hard to remember the names of the. Uh, I think there were like five you did, but you did a lot of other television, which of course led to what everybody seems to remember you best for, that you directed virtually every single episode of Green Acres. Oh. <laughs> the director in Hollywood in those days. <laughs> we have many fans in this room who uh, grew up with Green Acres and who just thank you from the bottom of their hearts for not just the five years it was originally on, but for the countless joy that that show continues to give. And they just put it back on me television, so. I can tell you that today uh, on that. One month ago, I signed a contract to do Green Acres as a Broadway musical. <laughs> Control over, but I had acquired it a couple of years ago from the estate of Jay Summers, who was one of the great comedy writers of all time. And uh, so we'll see how that works out. It'll take probably a year before it gets on the road. And I'm trying to get it to open up off Broadway uh, down here in Orange County, along the Rod Theater, would be a perfect venue for this musical based on these characters. Was it easy to rig the pig? <laughs> the pig is going to give us a problem when it's uh, live on stage. <laughs> I'm not sure how they're going to handle it. But I won't be directing. Thank God. Uh, so Phyllis, you have also did a lot of other television as well. Do you have any other great memories of working on television aside from Superman? Because I know you did Cisco Kid. And... Are you sharing one? Oh, there. Conscious of the mic, yeah. Uh, yeah, I worked uh, a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with Joel McRae. Joel McRae. Did a Western, and Charles Mark was born to direct that. Mm -hmm. We started Gunsmoke. And, oh, I, you know, it's so hard for me to remember. Oh, sure. Now, isn't it true that you made an appearance on a modern version of Superman called Lois and Clark? Didn't you play Lois Lane's mother? No, I was going to. Were you going to? I did, I did play her. Yeah, you did. I did, yeah, I did play her mother. But right. I couldn't come back to Hollywood. Oh. And I lived in Monterey, Carmel at the time, and I didn't want to leave there, so. Okay. If anyone has any questions, just raise your hand and speak real loud. I'm going to start right over there, sir. Yeah, it seems that uh, the Joe McDoke's comedies and Green, Green Acres were the precursors to Police Squad and the Naked Gun films 
that type of humor. Do, do you do you believe that? Do you see that? He's comparing uh, Green Acres and Joe McDokes to the uh, police squad and modern parody shows. No, I, I don't think there's any connection there at all. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, the, the wink humor and, you know, the the way they, they did that and, and brought the audience in with, with it. You don't see the connection at all there? Is anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, this might be hard to remember. I'm just so curious what the name of that pilot was. And then for both of you, what your favorite episodes of the McDowell were the... Do you have a favorite? Well, I, I like the, my favorite one you just saw. The, the crazy people with couldn't kiss. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you want to be pretty. Yeah. You want to be pretty. And Phil, do you have a favorite? I had a favorite, and somebody had it on video, and they came to my aunt and brought it. We, we had cocktails and. Oh, George and watched it, and George and I were dancing around, imagining <laughs> how beautiful they were. <laughs> they were all fun. They were all fun. They were, fun. They were all fun. Do you remember the pilot you did? That was the part of the question. Would you remember a pilot that you had done? No. No. Oh, for Superman. Yeah, no, we no. did a pilot. We did Superman and the Mole Man. And later it was uh, divided into two episodes. But I saw it in Scotland in its entirety. Um, and that's when the mole man came up out of the, the ground with the uh, electrolux. The <laughs> electrolux. And I knocked everybody down. And George said, take a look at that. That's your vacuum thing. Mark, <laughs> you know the name of the pilot. Uh, well, I think she, what, what they're referring to, uh, Phyllis, is the pilot you did for Desi Arnaz, for Desi Lu. When you right when you left Superman, and I think it was called "Here Comes Alice" or "There Goes oh, Alice." Oh yeah, I did a series. Yes, yeah. I think it was called "Here Comes Alice." This is Alice. This is Alice. With a very talented little girl, Tommy Farrell, Lucian Littlefield, and yeah. I used David as the baby because I could make it. That's not the one you did with Beverly Washburn as the girl, right? That was something about a doctor. Yeah. We're going back quite a few years here, so please understand. Too many years you know, ago. Right over there, just yell at John. <clears throat> Sir? Oh, he's got his hand on his chin. That's all I can see. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We all, we all like to know uh, how long they were together. You mentioned it, honeymoon. <laughs> well, they would like to know after your honeymoon how long were you married? How long have we been married after the honeymoon? <laughs> that was the question, not mine. No, no. A month? Seven months. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> 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 we never, we, it was a very interesting divorce because uh, we were still in love. We really were. And uh, we continued to work together. I mean, nothing had changed uh, right. professionally. There's just we had a little interlude there, some intimacy, you know, how young people do. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> 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 have you seen uh, the Charlie Chase short, Mighty Like a Moose? Have you ever seen a, a Charlie Chase two reel comedy called Mighty Like a Moose? Not that I ever recall. I read someplace that there was a similarity. Yes. In one of the mix up. Mm -hmm. It's so you want to be pretty, uh, he had bad teeth and she had a big nose and so did Mighty Like a Moose. Well, that may have been uh, George O'Hanlon's contribution. I'm not quite sure. We worked together and uh, I had never, because I consciously, I would not have stumbled Charlie Chase short for that mind. Of course you wouldn't, no. but I still love that short. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, this is a question for Mr. Bear. After becoming a successful comedy director, you changed uh, course and did a couple very good crime melodramas. Um, why did you do that, and why did you go back to comedy after doing the crime features? Uh, to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I was on the contract. I had two contracts with Warner Brothers. One was the little independent company that I had where my profit was always uh, the, dip, the, the difference between how much, how cheaply I could make them and I, I'd get my son and that would be my profit. And I had George on a personal contract. So 
Uh, and I married the other one, they kind of locked it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I told the filmmaker I was in those days. <laughs> and well, anyway, wait a minute, I'm going to let it roll over here. Go, baby, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I was talking about? Ah, uh, you were talking about uh, the fact that you made the transition from comedy to doing some, some uh, crime drama. Whoa! Wow, well, we did that together, didn't we? Tell them about uh, some of those uh, features you did, some of the, the later films, like oh, Wicked, oh, Wicked. Oh, what the, the lead in is that I, I was uh, given a chance to direct a feature film at Warner because uh, Jack Warner, who loved short subjects, and he got to know me a little bit, or I vice versa, and, and we uh, we made a, uh, or he, he told Gordon Hollingshead, who was the head of the department, the shorts department, he said, give that kid a, a feature. So I was given the thing called Flaxseed Martin and then another one right after that. And I did about, I don't know, six or seven low budget films uh, for Warner Brothers, one after the other. Not one of them was in comedy. So when television came along, they wanted to, uh, uh, somebody to produce their television. And I said, well, what are they going to pay? And they said, uh, 500 a week. And I said, hell, I make more than that. It doesn't direct me. I made 750 a week in those days. So we, uh, I, uh, Bill Orr, if that name does not rip William T. Orr, name it, name anything. He eventually was head of Warner Brothers, uh, Short, I mean, TV, TV, was a good personal friend of mine. And he called me and he said, well, if you, if you don't want to produce Cheyenne, which was, kind of, was their first show, who can you get? And I said, I got just the guy. So I picked up the phone and I called Roy Huggins over at Columbia and said, Roy, I just said, you're just about to uh, leave Columbia. And he said, yeah, and I'm, as I speak, I'm cleaning out my desert. Uh, desert? <laughs> <laughs> what are drawers? Yes. <laughs> Deserted? Drawers? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I said, can you come over here right after lunch and meet Bill Orr? He said, yeah, I'll be there. Next day, he was my producer. And he took the five hundred dollars that I was still getting the silver pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I felt good about that. <laughs> and you did do some westerns like the Dakotas. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what are all, the all, all, all I did all of the shows, uh, Seventy Seven Sunset Strip. <laughs> that, was, that was an interesting story in that it was made as a feature film. And uh, in 10 days, because I shot Joe McDoak style real fast. And when it was done, they looked at it, and Bill Orr called ABC, whoever it was at that time, over to look and said, Look, I think we have a series here. We have a, it was a show, the, the feature was called something. Uh, Girl on the Run was, was going to go out in the theaters. So they made a deal that we would not put the, the, the feature in the theaters and it would serve as a pilot. So they changed the name of the pilot to 77 Sunset Strip. And that was how that was started. Mm -hmm. So I directed a whole bunch of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Phyllis, I'm not just saying it because you're here, but you always were my favorite Lois Lane because when someone would, would grab you, you'd be the one that would be kicking and screaming and I felt bad for every actor that had to hold you down. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the more modern Lois Lane adaptations compared to yours? I wish you hadn't asked me that. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We won't tell you that. Well, frankly, it got a little syrupy. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it got a little syrupy. Thank you. It, the whole mood of the thing changed. And uh, Noel and I were never able to become friends, which I wanted to be a friend, mm -hmm. you know. And the whole thing kind of, but they all stayed and collected residuals. And George brought me a, um, 
a script when I lived up north federally in Rock, I was moving. And he brought me a script. He was in the director's field. He got him, uh, Eddie got him in the, uh, Eddie Maddox got him in the director's field. George Hall. Oh, Reeves. Reeves. Oh, Reeves. How did you remember George O'Hanlon? It's not all about you, it's about our and it was a sci-fi, but I was in the process of moving. I said, oh God, don't leave it with me, I'll lose it. He said, well, be in touch with me the minute you get moved. Okay. Well, you know what happened in the interim there. Mm -hmm. Died, and, he did. Uh, yeah. Died, he did. Died, he did. Is that what you were referring? Is that what you were referring to? <laughs> but I didn't expect that. Nobody did. Okay. But, uh, Phyllis, do you have a favorite role that you've played in your entire career? Is there something that sticks out that you said, this is my favorite, favorite work? Favorite work? Well, I worked with some good, I worked with Ida Lupino, but, um, I've forgotten what it was, but it was such a thrill to work with her. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, what a wonderful woman. Beautiful, talented, tiny little. Ah, uh, golly, blue beard. Yeah. <laughs> she was just great. You know, and I've worked with some wonderful people, but it's been a long time since I've been in the business. And in a way, I've kind of dropped it out of my mind. It's good to see Dick. It brings back a lot of good memories. Well, you're going to get to see uh, Dick this evening because uh, we have a celebrity banquet at the hotel, and we're honoring the two of you for your lifetime achievements, and we're all excited. I do want to just point out, because I asked Phyllis two years ago when I, when I was talking with her in Sacramento to please come to Cinecom, and it took two years to do this, and I asked Mr. Bear as well, and the only reason that it really totally happened is our friend Bart Williams drove all the way to get her, and they were in a car, it was something like seven hours just to drive here. Sonoma in the heat. I never want to fly. <laughs> Wendy loaned him a car, a beautiful Cadillac, air conditioned. I said, okay. <laughs> well, this evening we will be having a wonderful dinner with you as our as our guests of honor. And thank you for being with us here and sharing your memories of the joint. What are you doing tonight, babe? We're having dinner. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, I Good facial for, uh, expressions. Uh, I didn't have to teach you that. That came with you. That came with the package. Yeah. Oh, you're still here? Yeah, you can't get rid of me. Have we broken your camera yet? Oh, good. Ah. I have an old-fashioned camera with real film in it. Are you ready? He can't develop it, but he's got real film in it. Yeah. 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 You can play. I've got your still. In fact, it's... Where's my bag? He's got the bag. He's got the bag. He's got the bag. I brought a still. Yes, I mean, that's just my saying. And I would really get to the point where we get a book. I would recommend you. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Is have a, a shot of you kissing. Great. Mr. Bain. Yeah, I kissed him. Wait, well, you're, you're uh, heading uh, in for the kill. He's not a pro. <laughs> we're quite there yet. He was an amateur, but boy. Uh, you you think the, the, Is he musical? The real man was doing it. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. These are all over. They're 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 over. They